I'm just a guy who loves Disney that has way too much time on his hands. If anybody from Disney is watching, please don't sue me. I'm here to rate, review, and describe all of your favorite things from the magical world of Disney. I'm Fawn Underwini and welcome to my Disney News and Reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Disney News and Reviews. I'm Fawn Underwini. Pretty cool week for me this week, guys, I gotta say. I went back to work, um, and, uh, that was awesome, you know, just because, uh, you know, it just, had, you know, I had that week off, so that was really cool. We also had that live Q&A, which was awesome. Um, I want to thank everybody who was a part of that, who joined in uh, on the old festivities. We had a bunch of people there, and it was really cool. We, you know, we had a, a nice little conversation, and it, uh, it worked out really well. Um... I am, uh, if you missed this one, I am going to be doing another one in uh, December, sometime around Christmas. Uh, so, uh, if, you, know, you know, hopefully you can make that one. I might make it an additional hour longer, so it'll be three hours. Uh, I'll do it from like five to nine, or uh, six to nine instead of seven to nine. Um, just because, uh, I mean, I mean, this one went by pretty quickly. But it went by really good. Um, I have a video up. Uh, I actually just checked my old, my older videos, and you can see the uh, you know how how it went. And uh, hopefully, I got to everybody's questions. If I missed your question, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I will, but I will be doing another one. So hopefully, I'll get it uh, answered next time. But uh, th again, thanks to everybody that uh, showed up. That it was a really fun night. It really it was you know it was awesome. I got a couple things in the mail this week, which is actually really cool. Um, a friend of mine uh, uh, went down to Disney World and they uh, were kind enough to bring stuff back for me. They thought kind of, you know, highly enough of me to do that. Got a little uh, note here that says, we love your show. Here are some goodies from our most recent trip to Walt Disney World. Enjoy. And uh, please find out if Tables in Wonderland is worth it. Thanks, uh, Florence and Andrea. Well, thank you guys for this. Uh, first, let me show you what it is. First off, it's an awesome... Mickey Ghost uh, uh, car antenna topper. You put it on the uh, on your on your car antenna and it flies in the wind. That's really cool. I'm not gonna put it on my car antenna. I'm gonna put it up here because I I like it so much. I'm gonna put it right here, right in that little Epcot thing. And they also got me this awesome so uh, Sorcerer's uh, maps or uh, I'm sorry, Sorcerer's in the Magic Kingdom uh, map and card uh, set. Basically what the Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom is, it's a game where you can go around the Magic Kingdom and you can interact with these, you know, different things and uh, you're, you're helping Merlin, you know, go all around it. It's like a card game and everything, it's just, it's really neat. So uh, you can see all the different cards, might do a, you know, a special unboxing on this later. Uh, I haven't played it myself, um, but it looks really awesome. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's for the people that, you know, when, you know, when you go to Disney World, it just gives you something else to do. And uh, let me show you the maps. There's one side of the map. Shows you all the different locations for interactivity, which is really cool. And you gotta, you know, follow the story and do all that, which is just totally awesome. So thank you so much for that. Uh, you guys are awesome. Um, as far as uh, tables in Wonderland goes, I want to be doing something special for you. I'm actually going to review that. Uh, well, not really review it, but give you information on it. Uh, because I've, I've never actually done it before, but I'll, I'll give my opinion as to whether or not I would even do it, um, just based on if I'm interested in it or not. So I'm not going to rate it, I'm just going to say if I'm interested in it, in it or not. Now the other thing I got in the mail, actually, it was actually a surprise. Um, I wasn't ready for this, but a lot of people know that this past week was the Epcot 30th anniversary. And... Uh, I gotta say, I was kind of bummed the fact that I didn't, I wasn't able to go this year, uh, you know, for just because I just don't have the money. Um, but um, I will be there for the 40th. I can promise you that. But uh, you know, they were doing a bunch of stuff, and there's a lot of people down there. And uh, one of the, uh, the, the the people that gave me some uh, 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 the package a week ago or a couple weeks ago uh, had a friend who was down there. And uh, anyway, you know, I'll, I'll let her. I uh, said, so Nick, I know you were uh, bummed you did not get to visit Epcot for their the, uh, 30th, uh, 30 year anniversary. Uh, my friend was at Epcot and I will uh, I was con I convinced her to snag a map, a times guide, and a button. I hear the buttons went fast. I hope it makes uh, missing being there a, a, a bit tolerable. 
I really enjoy all your reviews, thanks. Uh, we are taking a cruise on the Fantasy, that's awesome, in March. And I will be sure to snag some uh, freebies there. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, awesome little card there, that's pretty cool. Uh, but uh, she she got her friend to grab me a uh, an Epcot 30 pin, which is quite awesome, and an Epcot 30 map and times guide. Now I have a, a Magic Kingdom 40 map and uh, times guide and pin and all that. Uh, here's the Epcot map, and then when you open it up. Uh, it, it review it, it's all the maps from you know you know from the past, which is really cool. So uh, I now have the uh, the Magic Kingdom 40 and the Epcot 30. So uh, I'll try not to miss any more of those things. I'll schedule my vacations around that. You know who knows. But uh, thank you so much, Tracy, for that. I really uh, was uh, you know shocked and uh, you know humbled that you would do that. So uh, I really appreciate that. I was you know, that made my day. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate the gifts. You guys spoil me way too much. Uh, yeah. So uh, anyway, I know that ran long. I'm sorry. I just wanted to show you that because they're really, really, you know, really, really cool. Let's get right to the news. A soft opening of the new Fantasyland happened this past week, and sure enough, all of my favorite Disney outlets had it fully covered. If you would like to learn more about the soft opening, view pictures and videos and all that other stuff, uh, all about all the new, new attractions, be sure to check out allers.net or touringplans.com or, do, or uh, uh, wdwmagic.com. They have uh, a whole bunch of pictures and videos. It's really cool. They had all their scouts out for this big occasion. And uh, I got to say, some of my favorite parts that I saw were uh, Gaston's Tavern. Um, they had, you know, all, all the scenery looks really good, and of course, uh, the uh, you know, you, the Little Mermaid attraction, which looks absolutely stunning, and uh, I really can't wait to go down and see that, so that's going to be really cool. Disney has officially announced a reopening, a reopening date for the new test track, uh, December 6th of this year. Previously, a, only a late fall time frame had been given, but we now have a hard date of December 6th. Uh, which is also the official grand opening date of the new Fantasyland, so that's pretty cool. Disney's Grand Floridian Resort is now equipped with an LCD screen at the bus stop, giving what appears to be live information about upcoming bus arrivals. The screen lists each destination and the precise arrival times of the next two arriving buses. Disney Research cast members have been posted at the bus stop surveying guests about the system. I think this is an awesome thing that they should you know implement everywhere uh this is a it's a it, it, that's perfect it would really let people know uh, you know exactly where you know you know where their bus is you know with the whole rfids thing and the wireless thing that disney's doing i think this is a really 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 cool idea so i'm really looking forward to that uh to seeing more of that hopefully in the future shrunken ned's junior jungle boats the mini radio controlled boat attraction next to the jungle cruise has been removed Construction walls have been up for the last few weeks and have just been removed to reveal that the, the, that the attraction itself has been removed. It looks as though the area might be destined to become a stroller parking area for the Jungle Cruise, at least in the short term, pending any long-term plans for the area. So uh, I'm sorry, you know, you know, I shrunk in Ned's uh, Jungle Boats fan fans. I never even knew that was there, Perfect, uh, per to be perfectly honest. Sorry. Yeah, but anyway, it's not there anymore, so water under the bridge and in rehab and refurbishment news the refurbishment date for the California Grill at Disney's Contemporary Resort has been pushed back uh, the new closing date is February 2nd of 2013 with a reopening date in uh, late of summer 2013 no precise date has been uh, is, is, is available the restaurant was previously scheduled to close on January 6th of 2013 so they obviously had to push that back for whatever reason and finally, Splash Mountain, Splash Mountain, the big one, uh, is scheduled to be closing for a very lengthy refurbishment from January 2nd to March 19th, reopening on March 20th of 2013. Now, Splash Mountain typically closes for a month-long ride system refurbishment in January. Every January it does. But this extended refurbishment suggests that some of the show issues will also be addressed. So that's pretty cool, the fact that they're really taking time for it. So if you're going down between those dates, 
uh, January 2nd to March 19th. Sorry, you're, you're going to miss out on Splash Mountain, but it's really cold down there anyway. Who wants to be splashed during that? So, uh, yeah, that's the news for this week. Let's get right to the reviews. All right, now, as thanks to Florence and Andrea for getting me those awesome gifts, um, I want to review what they had mentioned, which is the Tables in Wonderland. Uh, now, this is formerly known as the Disney Dining Experience, and basically what this is, it's a discount dining program to open, uh, open to pa annual pass holders, Disney Vacation Club members, and Florida residents. Now, what this does, it provides a 20% discount on food and beverages, including alcohol, at most restaurants and lounges in the Walt Disney World area. Basically, it's just a, it's a discount card for the people that go to, uh, that go to Disney World a lot. And uh, that is one of the big things about this program is that in order to, you know, to really, you know, get the benefit of it, you have to go a lot and uh, in the long run, you will save money. Uh, now, what the costs are for, you know, each of these things, uh, it's $100 per year for Florida residents, $100 per year for Disney Vacation Club members, and $75 uh, a year uh, for annual and seasonal pass holders. So uh, if you uh, fall into, into any of that, that is what you're going to be paying uh, for this little discount thing where you get that 20% discount on the food and beverages in Disney World. Now, you must have proof that you kind of fit into these little areas. Uh, so don't think you can just be like, oh, I'm an annual pass hold member. No, you got to have proof. Uh, so, uh, you know, Disney will be able to, you know, be, you know, verify that. Now, what's really cool is you actually get complimentary uh, resort and hotel parking, including valet parking, uh, you know, with this thing. So that's really neat. Although you do have to prove to the valet that you went to the, uh, you, know, you know, to the restaurants and everything. Otherwise, well, that's just not, that's just not going to work. Now, when you're going into a theme park, you know, to dine, you actually get uh, reimbursed. All you got to do is, uh, you know, keep your receipt and Disney will reimburse that. So that's actually pretty cool. Uh, now, one of the other perks or, you know, some of the other perks about this, uh, you know, this deal for you, you know, this little thing that you can get is that you get invitations uh, to special member only events, you know, like the, the Wave Discovery dinners or the Jico Wine dinners and other things like that. So, um... Uh, it's actually, uh, it, it, you know, it, it's a pretty cool thing to have, especially if you dine at Disney a lot, uh, you know, however, if you only go, you know, once or, you know, once or twice a year, uh, this might not be the best thing for you. Um, now also, uh, these, um, dining things aren't accepted on holidays or most holidays, I should say. So, uh, you got to do it, you know, at, at, at other times of the year. Now, to be perfectly honest, I had no idea what this was. Uh, when I got the note, I went and researched it, and I thought it was actually a pretty cool thing. I, re I read up on it, and um, it's pretty neat, the fact that Disney would do that, the, you know, because Disney makes a lot of money off of their food and everything like that. And it's not like there's only a couple places you can go. Sorry, if you actually go to the website, you'll be you'll be able to see a whole list of all these different places that you can get this 20% discount on. And the fact that they include alcohol, that's that's pretty big, especially for Disney. Um, you know, and the, and the complimentary parking and whatnot. And uh, it, it, it actually seems like a pretty cool thing. So before signing up for this, uh, you know, know if you're able to even go to Disney a whole lot to, to, you know, to enjoy these restaurants and other things like that. Otherwise, you know, if you go once or twice, it's not really that worth it. So, um, again, like I said, I can't rate it because I've, I, you know, I don't have it. I can only, you know, you know, give you if, uh, if I, you know, if I'm interested in it or if I'm not interested in it, I do have to say this is pretty interesting. And if I did have the capability of going to Disney World a lot, if I lived in Florida, if I could go to all the restaurants whenever I wanted to, I would do it because it's it's, it's a hundred dollars. You get you know again, like I said, twenty percent discounts on all this stuff, and it's worth it to me, you know, because you could just go to Disney all all, all you want and eat pretty good food for you know a pretty good discounted price. Now, however, if I only go you know once a year, like I you know I, I go once every four years, um, you know. It's not worth it, you know. It's not worth to, you know. It's not worth it to pay that, you know, that extra hundred dollar, extra hundred dollars. So, you got to know yourself and know you know, the way, you know, where you live and all that stuff. So you got to know if you if it's even worth it for you. So you know, break out the pocketbook and uh, 
see you know and the spreadsheets and stuff and see if it's even worth it so the tables in wonderland is pretty interesting i would recommend it again to people that you know live in florida and are huge disney fans that like to dine around the world and uh dine around all of Walt disney world uh, you know, and try different things because it's you know it's a pretty cool thing. Twenty percent off—that's not—that's nothing to laugh at, you know. So uh, that's pretty neat. So the tables in Wonderland, recommended, I guess. You know, if you fit into the right category. All right, guys. The next thing I want to review—it is an attraction, and it is the Jungle Cruise, the historic Disney's Jungle Cruise in the Magic Kingdom. Now what these guys say, the Jungle Cruise is an outdoor safari themed boat ride adventure. Major attraction, go before 10 a.m. or two hours before closing or use Fast Pass. Yes, this is a Fast Pass ride. A lot of fun to ride at night. Very good tip there. Uh, a long and during uh, Disney classic, three stars. It is. This is one of the you know, you know the classic Disney attractions. This was at the opening of Disneyland and the opening of the Magic Kingdom and uh, it's totally worth it. Now this is in Adventureland in the Magic Kingdom right next to the Enchanted Tiki Room and the Swiss Family Treehouse. Now this is like I said a very historic attraction. This is in Disneyland and uh, Di Tokyo Disneyland and Hong Kong Disneyland although Disneyland Paris apparently does not have one. Kinda weird right? Now the whole main theme of this ride is it's supposed to simulate a riverboat cruise through uh, st uh, several major rivers of uh, Asia, Africa, and South America all in one little eight minute cruise here. Now what's cool about this attraction is is the history behind it. Disney, when he came up with this, was in the midst of the war and they were doing the uh, True Life Adventures and uh, you know the history of the True Life Adventures is a story in and of itself. The fact that you know Disney wasn't making motion pictures really, you know, well, he still was, but uh, he wasn't. He didn't have a, a lot of money to do things, and you know, in order to try to you know generate some sort of revenue to keep the you know the show rolling, he uh, you know he was forced during the wartime to do different things, and uh, one of them was the True Life Adventures, and that got him interested in animals and all this you know all this different other stuff. And uh, after one of these true life adventures, um, I, can't, I think it's the one with the lion. He uh, he had an idea of you know of, an, of a ride for um, you know the the new Disneyland idea he was doing, and this was the Jungle Cruise, a jungle cruise through uh, you know you know so you could see all these different animals and whatnot. Now originally, Disney wanted real animals to be in this attraction, and uh, a lot of people you know can say that. The Jungle Cruise actually was the whole reason the entire park of Disney's Animal Kingdom even happened. Because uh, Walt originally wanted a, a drive through thing where you would see real animals. But back then, Disney was already having enough trouble just getting stuff, you know, you know going. So uh, they were in the, anima you know, the animatronic business and they weren't in the, in the animal business. And they realized it was going to be a, you know, a, tough, ta a tough task to uh, control and uh, you know to sh you know exhibit these animals in the in a you know in a storied in a storied setting they couldn't you know he, he couldn't control them so he had his imagineers you know come up with audio animatronic stuff and thus you have the jungle cruise which it is right now now also uh, when this uh, attraction started in 1955 in Disneyland this was originally a very serious attraction the um, the the hosts i guess you could say the you know the tour guides the uh you know the safari people they uh were supposed to be very dead serious and like you were supposed to actually see you know they were supposed to make you believe that that you know elephant that you saw in the water was real um and what's funny was you know talking to my mom when she uh, she remembers when you know when she went on the jungle cruise in disney world in 1974 or 76 whenever they went down uh, she thought that you know, you know the stuff was real. So uh, back then, that was uh, pretty big stuff to have those uh, the animatronic stuff happening. And uh, I just you know I think that's pretty funny the fact that you know people thought that was real because today now I mean that's just like oh my god, that's totally not real. But back then, hey, you know it could it could have been. Now the ride itself in the Magic Kingdom opened on October first of nineteen seventy five. It was. Uh, a pretty big attraction. It was one of the ones that was brought over from Disneyland, obviously. And uh, when you walk up to it, uh, it has its own little area in Adventureland. It's right there next to, like I said, Enchanted Tiki Room and the Swiss, uh, the Swiss Family Treehouse. 
Uh, it is a fast pass ride because this ride this ride does get long lines. It's 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 it's, it's actually pretty funny. Uh, so pay attention to the wait times because if it's around 20 minutes, just go in. Even though the line might look long, just go in. They don't have all of the queue open up because the queue is separated into four different sections. Uh, and uh, you know the queue in and of itself is a, is a pretty interesting experience because there's a lot of Disney in jokes there. There's a lot of Disney references on the you know the different crates and shipping containers there. Uh, you know they uh, you know, pay reference to old Disney uh, ad addresses. The, for instance, there's the Disneyland address 1313, whatever it was. That's the Disneyland address. Um, there's uh, di you know names that are on crates that uh, you know were you know references to the Imagineers that made this ride you know, Wavell Rogers and Winston Hibbler he was the author uh, the, I'm sorry the uh, the narrator of the true life uh, adventures that's pretty cool and also you got Harper Goff who was uh, the Imagineer that uh, made you know he helped this ride but he also made uh, design Main Street USA which is completely cool uh, so it's really cool that Disney does that, and a, and a lot of the old cues, a lot of uh, all of the cues, all the numbers and the little, uh, you know, like the the anagrams and stuff like that, they're all kind of, they're not just random numbers. Sometimes they are, but most of the time, 80% of the time, all the numbers, uh, you know, have some sort of reference to either the ride opening, uh, you know. You know, so a past history uh, attraction. You know, so whenever you're in, you know, in a queue in a line and you're just staring at a wall. Look around at all the different little details that you know Disney throw, throws in there because there's actually some pretty cool stuff in there, and uh, you might learn something, especially if you're a big Disney fan. And plus, with all the uh, you know the smartphones that people have now, you can look up the numbers and be like, oh, I can see that's a that's a Disney reference there, and you can come and tell me, and I can you know put on the show. <laughs> Now the queue is actually very, very long. Like I said, it uh, you know, it's deceptively long, especially when all four sections are open. You 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 like you know, you go through one section, be like, oh, we're coming to the ride. Oh nope, you're in another section, then another section, then another section, then finally you hop on to the boats. Now there are twelve, uh, actually thirteen boats total, but only twelve run in, you know, in order, uh, for each uh, eight or eight to nine minute cruise, and. Uh, it is uh, wheelchair accessible for you know for people who have that it is wheelchair accessible. They will stop the boats and you can and you don't have to get out of it. You can just ride right onto the boats, which is really cool. Now once you get on the boats, they're all they're all named different you know you know di you know different names and a lot of them have their own histories that I'm not going to get into right now. A lot of people are huge Jungle Cruise fans and they get really deep into the history of everything. I can't do that. Uh, but when you hop on a boat you are greeted obviously with your tour guide and uh, they are usually pretty funny they you know spout off jokes and everything they're not as serious as they as as it was back in the you know in the 50s uh, the, this this ride in and of itself is a joke it has become a joke ride you know you go there to laugh because obviously you're, you know you're not going to take you know fake bugs and fake alligators seriously. Although every now and then you will occasionally get a real alligator because you're in Florida after all, and there are alligators everywhere, and you might see a real one. So uh, just don't you know keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle at all times, folks. Let me tell you. Um, now depending on the tour guide is depending on how funny your uh, you, know, you know your time is. I mean, a lot of people have have done this. I mean, uh, John Lasseter, who the guy who does Cars and the inventor of Pixar and all that, the head cr guy at Pixar, he was a Jungle Cruise uh, operator. He was a Jungle Cruise tour guide, which is actually pretty cool. Um, all the times I've ever been down there, I've had a really good tour guide. They're you know they're always really funny, coming up with really corny and uh, very punny jokes, if you know what I mean. Um, you know, you have to really you know listen to them, and then you'll you know you listen to the you know to their joke. See the scene that they're uh, you know talking about, and you know you'll get a lot of this stuff. I want to show you some video uh, soon, so uh, you'll you'll understand. Our tour guide was actually pretty good. She did a really good job. Uh, now there are different sections. You see, you know, hippopotamuses, uh, uh, elephants, lions. You know, you got monkeys terrorizing a camp. A rhinoceros is terrorizing a guy, and they're all up a pole and everything. Now one of the cool uh, you know bits of trivia is in the one section where you see the tail end of a plane. The front section of that plane is in the Casablanca uh, scene at 
the Great Movie Ride. So if you uh, go to the Great Movie Ride, you know, during the Casablanca scene, and you'll see the, you know, the, the, the plane there, it doesn't have a back. The back is actually in the Jungle Cruise attraction in the Magic Kingdom, uh, so that, you know, you know, for, you know, for that reason, so you can see that. Uh, there's you go, there's your little bit of uh, Jungle Cruise trivia. Uh, now there is a section of this where you go through a dark tunnel and it's pretty, it is really dark so if you're you know like claustrophobic or uh, afraid of the dark you know uh, it's only like you know 30 seconds long it's not that bad but there is a section where you do go through it so if you if you don't like darkness and all that stuff uh, either don't get on the ride or just kind of uh, you know look at your phone or something you know uh, you should be okay though it's not that bad it's really not that bad but uh. But I just wanted to let you know, because I'm out here to help you. I love you guys. Uh, so yeah, I have a, a, a bunch of video of the Jungle Cruise. It's not the whole thing, because I want you guys to go down and experience it yourself. But uh, a lot of it, you know, has some, you know, some bits that you can see. And uh, you, you, you'll get a good feel for what the ride actually is. So here you go. Enjoy some footage from the Jungle Cruise. <laughs> Those are the VIP seats. And the VIP obviously stands for VIP. So that's exciting. You're just gonna slide around the door there for me. Are you gonna help balance out the boat so when we sink, we do sink evenly? Yes, that was one, not if. There we go. One hand, two hands. We are out of here. Everybody, wave bye to those beautiful people up there. <laughs> and this python is actually very nice, but be careful right there, sir. Do not get too close. She will develop a crush on you. <laughs> really, girl? Really? And look what they did to my Jeep. Just look what they did to it. I cannot believe they painted it too. It's okay. Good news is I couldn't get my Jeep to start this morning, and they did finally get it to turn over. <laughs> <laughs> they have the African belt. This is where animals come to drink from the Nile. We've got some wildebeest, Jamie. giraffe, and power. We have zebras over there, and we have lions. Babysitting that sweet sleeping zebra. I tried to warn them that you cannot outrun a rhinoceros. They wouldn't listen to me. It's okay. They got the point. Get it? It's funny because he's a rhino. It's just like this one. guys enjoyed that um it's you know it's, it's pretty standard that's it's his it's historic it's funny it's so bad but it's so good and everybody keeps saying you know when's the jungle cruise going to get updated it i don't i don't i don't want it to if it does and, and you know and they try to make it cooler 
it just won't be the same. It won't be as cool as it currently is right now. So um, I'm really satisfied with the way the Jungle Crew Cruise is right now. It's funny. It's just a it's a it's a weird little attraction. It's not very exciting or anything. You know, some teens might not like it, but if you know, people who get the jokes and you know Disney fans, you know, especially Disney history fans, usually love this attraction and they get on it. Usually, in there, it's not in their top you know uh, you know ten rides usually, but uh, I really love the, the the Jungle Cruise, so it is in well, you know some of my top Magic Kingdom rides. So what am I going to give the Jungle Cruise at Disney's Magic Kingdom? I'm, I'm giving it a four. I think it's better than that, you know, you know, than the three that they gave it. I think it's one of the, you know, it's one of the attractions that if you don't see, the, you know, the first time you go to Disney World, you but be, you better make sure you, you know, you see it the next time. It's historic Disney. It's classic Disney. Uh, you know, just like all of the Magic Kingdom is. If you're willing to sit through the Carousel of Progress or get on the Swiss Family Treehouse. Get on the Jungle Cruise, go you know at a time when it's you know when it's not busy, and just get on it and have fun. You know it's uh, it's stupid. It's you know it's just it's just, it's stupid. It's it's hysterical, but you know what? It's the Jungle Cruise. It's historic and totally worth your time. Uh, you know and enjoy the Disney history that goes along with it. So the Jungle Cruise at Disney's Magic Kingdom, four stars. Check it out, guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's Disney news and reviews. Again, it's pretty late here, so I'm a little tired, and uh, I know my energy might not be up. I think it is in my head currently, because I'm running on an energy drink right now, but I'm starting to realize that I'm really tired. Hmm. But whatever. Uh, I still think this episode was actually pretty good, and thanks to everybody that, you know, that got me gifts, you know, the, you know, the Epcot 30 stuff, and the, uh, the awesome, uh, you know, uh, ghost uh, antenna topper and the magic kingdom cards I mean really guys you guys spoil me so much so thanks to everybody that got me those things you guys are awesome and uh, I really won't forget it um, you know I really you know I, I appreciate that so much I really do uh, so yeah if, if anybody from Disney is watching please don't sue me I want everybody to go down and enjoy Disney World I want them to go down and enjoy the campiness that is the Jungle Cruise it's so funny uh, and if you are going to Disney World, go to allers.net, toyingplans.com, www.magic.com for all your latest and greatest Disney news. WaltDisneyWorld.com is good too. Straight from the horse's mouth stuff. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. But you know what? You guys should uh, continue watching all the stuff on YouTube. It's pretty cool. And uh, check out my live Q&A if you haven't already. I have that It's you know up there. It's uh, two hours long. It's the two hour long video. Yeah. So see you guys next week for another Disney news and reviews. Bye, guys.